Hey, hey guys, was it Monday afternoon? It's a holiday up here in Canada. So this is gonna be a quick vlog because I wanna go out and enjoy the uh, sunny day outside. So if you look, there we go. It's looking pretty good out there. Anyway, so what I'm gonna talk about very quickly is a bit of a mistake I made with my, uh, with managing my code base. What I did was, well, anybody knows when you're developing an app and you have a live app that users are using, uh, software as a server, a SaaS, um, you have to have a production server and you have to have a development server. Now the development server should mirror the production server. They should be the same, ideally on the same physical server or the same VPS, virtual private server, with all the exact same settings. Everything should be cloned so it's identical. Why? So that when you deploy to your development server to check make sure everything's working cool, uh, you know that when you push it to the live server, the uh, production server, as they say, you know that things will work the same, at least in theory. And that usually is the case. So if you've been following this vlog, you know that I am basically uh, shutting down the development of the 3X branch of Studio Web because the 3X branch uh, is based on a very old architecture, still very solid, pretty much bug free. And, uh, but to do what I want to do in the coming year, where I'm going to implement an AI component to Studio Web, and we'll get into the details, the current architecture, the 3X branch architecture, just, it's just too much, too much work, too messy, seven years old. So we have started production while building from scratch the 4.0 version of Studio Web, which is utilizing far more advanced MVC framework, more advanced ORMs and other libraries that will allow us to uh, better implement the uh, system that I see in my mind's eye. So back to the 3.1. So we have our development server, we have a production server, we pushed the development server, everything was cool. So then I said, okay, fine. So let's drop the development server. This was my mistake. Before deploying to the production server, the live server, I told my lead developer, I said, eh, since you know we have our code in uh, GitHub and it's all uh, there and backed up and so on, and since the development server mirrors the production server, I said it works on the production. It will, excuse me, it works on the development server. Let's just push it to the production and we'll be done with it. And so I said, just just drop the development server for 3.1 because 3.1 is no longer going to be developed. It's done. This was the last version. That's it. It's over. So we dropped it. And because what we were doing was just adding some things behind the scenes that were not really important now, that only become important in September when the schools get back on in the system, it sort of got lingered in the background, didn't actually get pushed to the live server for a couple of weeks. So we finally pushed it recently, and bing bang, for some reason, one key thing, again, not affecting any of the users, but one key thing didn't work on the production server for some reason. The exact same code base worked fine in development, but for some reason didn't work in production. And that's a head scratcher. Now, I'm not writing a code these days, so I don't know what's going on here, but uh, that's a head scratcher. Now, here was my mistake. I shouldn't have taken down the dev droplet or the dev server until I saw that the production server was up and running fine, everything was cool, because if on deployment to the production server, I would have seen the problem, I would have said, wait a second, what's different between the production and the dev, dev server? What's going on here? And unfortunately though, I destroyed the dev droplet, so I can't, uh, I can't contrast and compare. It's not a huge issue. It would have been nice to have the dev server there for me to uh, analyze. We'll have my lead developers analyze that, but unfortunately we don't have it, whatever. We just got to compare the code uh, see what's going on. It should be the exact same code because we're using GitHub and so forth. I think it's a database. I think something happened with the database. Somebody, a field was not added or something. I don't know. Anyway, I won't get into the details here. What is the point to take away? This is a very rare situation. I never destroy dev servers for this very reason, but because of this situation, first time uh, in, uh, I think, my career where I decided to basically put a halt on future development on a particular uh, code base. So I did, for the first time I said, well, we're not developing anymore, I don't need a dev server, so I destroyed it. 
That was a mistake. That was a mistake. Again, not major. The first time ever, because the first time ever I'm actually, I actually decided to stop from you know developing a particular code base. But nonetheless, learn from my lesson. Even in this situation where you're stopping development, keep your working dev server up and running just in case, you know, something like what happened to me might happen to you. So that's it for the vlog. Ciao, ciao.